The following recording is from the work session of Little Falls, Minnesota City Council, Monday, the 15th of May, 2017. 
originally asked for, that's more willing to give them that. But he won't agree because he knows he can get more. I'm like the third blue on this.
one strike almost with three draw pitches or something that was pretty long. Uh, so that would be a test there. Uh, another change regarding accessory buildings is currently the prohibition on accessory buildings on the business side. So we have a lot of time to get one of those. It is a small exception to that. setback and yard requirements uh, that was primarily all seen last fall. Uh, included in that we made a switch in terms of how the curve was started in the lot. Last section has to be with 
planning commission decided that they felt like that was a decision best made by the council um, the licensing in particular. Um, so in my conversation with uh, Morrison County, they do regulate and they do license those kinds of uses. I think they will do that in the city, but if the city wants to have its own standards for licensing, they would need to adopt those. And in the county's ordinance, they will step aside in that case and let the city um, and not enforce theirs. So Questions for Ben? Concerns? Thoughts? I'd be glad to have us on the work session again at the next meeting uh, before we can bring some help for introduction. Uh, that way we can have a good discussion in terms of what we want to, to have in that before we introduce it. Uh, because it's always easier to have it right when you introduce it so that we vote on it and it goes through as opposed to sending it back, rewriting it, and then coming again. Uh, so I'd be glad to. I have a, a suggestion, maybe. Um, the city of Lanesboro and their city code, they prohibit air meetings. And I wonder if that's something we would think about. And it's not because I have a BNB &B and I don't want the competition, it's because Airbnbs typically don't collect lodging taxes that directly benefit the CDB. Uh, so I don't know if that's something that. Planning Commission wants to think about what it is to ask them to look into. And I see Sartan just holding it down because they had somebody there that was actually offering it. An Airbnb? Yeah. yeah. And especially if we've got a bike trail coming through and we're trying to bring more BNBs into town, you know, in order to, for the city to benefit from them as well as the individual who has the BNB. Um, and they're Airbnbs are really unregulated, um, so it might be something to think about and look into. Well, it's also competition then for hotels in the community. Yeah. Um, and it's also, um, it's not like it was more for like the big city tourist traps where they had all kinds of am amenities for them. Yeah. So that's that's why Sartell voted it down. That's what they're doing. They voted against being. I believe so, yes. Yeah. Is it that bad of a thing, though, if we've got hotels in town that are filled up that don't have room for people to well, chase them on to the, the next house? Well, that we get some more hotels that the city can benefit from rather than, you know, because... Find an investor for it. Find an investor. True, but we have... We don't want to chase people out of town either because we want to limit them not to be able to have a Airbnb. If you got a half a dozen people in town that want to do it, I don't know why we 
chase people out of town to somewhere else because there ain't nowhere. Because the license B and B has a lot of hoops they have to jump through to get licensed. And if Airbnb is now doing the same thing without the license, without benefiting the city by paying lodging taxes, um, it's it's unregulated. They're, they don't have to be inspected by the fire marshal. So if there's a fire, I mean, there's it's just completely an unregulated area, and I think that the city of Little Falls should have something in place saying if you are an Airbnb, then these are the rules you have to follow, or no Airbnbs. There's something to look at and think of because it's becoming a real popular thing. People in every city in the nation, you know, has Airbnbs and people are pocketing the money without paying any taxes on it. So that's just something maybe that could be discussed. I would suggest maybe checking in with Sartell and what they went through and what their issues were and their concerns. Yeah, and yeah. Lanesboro. Find out what their city code is regarding that. That's a good example of what I was saying that there's uses now for different devices to go to the 90s. You can't accommodate all of them or can't necessarily come up with rules that's going to accommodate all of them in the future. That's certainly one that. Other questions? Well, we have something in place that somewhat covers that already because of it's like, and I'm more familiar with like your Uber and Lyft because they're vehicles, right? So Uber and Lyft are actually not selling it. They're an intermediary between two private parties. Well, I suspect Airbnb is kind of the same thing. They put party A in touch with party B for the arrangement. Well, you already have requirements for hotels and stuff, right? Sure. So, is it covered? I mean, I can't put an ad in the paper and rent it well, for on a nightly basis. Right? I don't think there's anything in our city ordinance that pertains to b and or Airbnbs in any way, shape, or form. But doesn't have to be Airbnb is what I'm saying is. There, some of the things that are that are coming out on, on this is that they'll limit um, the use of the B &B, Airbnb like that to a certain number of nights uh, where to prevent um, basically that owner from operating like bread and bread, a typical bread and bread. bread. Bed. bed and breakfast. <laughs> breakfast and bed. <laughs> uh, all the time. So this, you know, it, Airbnb is nice for some of those owners that maybe have a place to live and they're gone for two weeks and they want to get a little extra revenue out of that. I think that's the innocent side of it. Um, the others are where people are buying up a lot of property and potentially um, putting it on the market as an Airbnb instead of making it available as rental housing and that causes problems um, in terms of your housing stock, your affordable housing, you know, availability to people because they can make more money um, only having it rented out a couple nights a year versus having to sign a full year lease with the, with the tenant. So um, there are some, there are definitely some challenges in, in Airbnbs and that, in that um, use. I just did a quick search on their site and there are two, two buildings or two places in Little Falls. Talk about it's, you know, it's 
kind of is mixed bag. It, it creates some good things and opportunities for people to learn a little extra revenue on their other properties, but in, in other circumstances, it can be really bad, especially when it's not, um, if it is serving a larger capacity. a shortage of lodging in Little Falls. We only have 300 hotel beds in this town, and they're full all the time. So as far as competition, I don't think that's an issue. I think what we should do is try to attract some more, you know, legitimate B&Bs or small hotel to increase our lodging. That way, they're doing it by the book. They're, doing, they're regulated. They're licensed. They're inspected. They're safe. Let's just like home occupation. How many home occupations are in Little Falls that we have no idea that are going on? People working on a house, working out of their garage. It's one of those things. It's how much regulations can you put in? How much time do we spend in sending our forces out there to try to find these one or two people? We're going to search the internet and see who's out there doing bed breakfasts five days a week and see if there's a new one that pops up to go out and check on. There's people that do business, to be honest with you, there's people that are going to stick behind the scenes. It's no different than how many people buy stuff off the internet to avoid paying Minnesota sales tax and have it shipped in. It looks on yourself to end up paying that. And if they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. But there's only so much we can regulate. Well, that's not what the Zoning Commission said when I tried to get um, the hours of serving tea, I, I couldn't say, well, can it be up to the innkeeper? How, what hours they serve tea? And they said, no, this hour to this hour. So, you know, they is, it a, is it a B&B that they're operating or is it running out their house? Are they serving food? Is that what they're doing in these Airbnbs? Are they serving food? Do they have restaurants? Are they cooking food? Or are they... Some of them leave their fridge fully stocked. Some don't. But it's still lodging. Is it a B&B? No. Is it a hotel? Kind of. Is it an apartment that you're renting for a week? Kind of. So it's all the... Yeah, most of them are on nightly basis. Yeah. Most of them are for one night and people will, you know, rent out their apartment every single weekend and go stay with a friend and split the money with their friend. You know, it's... Sartell did that. They did? Yeah. Well, I think we should check into it at some point. We should just let lay. Um, well, it's not that we should, something we should just slam the door on and say, no, we're not going to allow them either. No, if well, we got a shortage, that much of a shortage. Well, that's why it needs to be discussed <coughs> and researched. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thursday thing that at seven I've got other things with my my daughter, so that doesn't work for me. But at like five that would work. Um, if that works for you guys. Or basically anything Friday. Friday I'll be gone. Okay. Wednesday at one, is that what is there no work on Wednesday at one? Wednesday is fifth. Friday I've got this Wednesday is the best day of us on the And any time on Wednesday. Wednesday at one doesn't work for one. One on Wednesday? We need any seven eighths bolts for that? No. Nope. Sounds like we'll have a core on that. Four. Wednesday at one don't work for you? The seventeenth. Seven eighths. Seven eighths. That's fine. Five. 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 That's six, so we should have nothing. Okay. So can I have the end of the meeting if you wouldn't mind just recessing the Wednesday the seventeenth at one? Wednesday at one. Ready for the next one? I am doing. Bumper, review. Uh, you got your demo in the, in the pack here. Um, we installed the bumpers on April 24th. So it's been out uh, about two, two and a half weeks now. At the time when we approved uh, installing the bumpers, it was a request for proposal there. Uh, it wasn't the timeline schedule or identified in it. Uh, what I would suggest, because May is technically pedestrian safety month, uh, that we keep them up through the month of May, or at least until the, um, the replacement delineators are used up. I think we only have about two of them left because they, when they get hit, they break apart. And There's four of them that were destroyed on the way into that year. You won't have enough to replace what's gone already. We could potentially keep them up, but in the, in the spirit of trying to honor what they requested and what we approved, uh, Try to get them up as long as possible. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not going to, realistically, it's probably not going to last through the month of May. Uh, but we did say that we would test them out for that, uh, for that group, and I, I'd like to try our best to try to do that. Uh, if you did reimburse the city for the cost of them, uh, so I just think we'll just feel like we should try to keep them as long as we can. I agree that they have been some difficulties. Uh, in that area, uh, we did a test area just to see what what the pedestrians, what the, the traveling public would react to them, and I, I think we, we know what the results are. Uh, for them. I would, uh, Mr. President, I would agree to try to stretch it out as long as we can. I've had numerous negative con comments against them. If I was from out of town and came through, I think we invented a new kind of sprinkler or something the way they're all splayed out only i'd wonder why you're watering the intersection um but yeah it just it doesn't look good uh even for the community but looks like we got some crap put out there looks uh, better with a planter in it <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and some rise off the morning. Morning. it does kind of look the like sidewalk truck truck. Oh. what's the chief's, <laughs> chief's take on it so far um, I would agree that uh, it's not the best location for uh, the traffic moves too fast, increasing the congestion. Um, coming into the 30 mile an hour zone, if it's a busy area, it's a congested area, any larger vehicles have to level with the new indicators when we get to the intersection. So it just is not good. The bicyclists are playing, uh, it's real dangerous for them because they have to check out further. And I could see it in an area with residential traffic, slow traffic, but there's too much traffic on first street in that area around the businesses, and it just is not a good area that location. What would it be better if we would have set it up in a less traveled area? It, it kind of would defeat purpose. Yeah. They're, they're intended to help with pedestrian safety by creating the zone of that the pedestrians crossing the street shorter. Uh, so it, you got to find that right mix, uh, but really this, this, what I've seen with the semi-traffic and larger vehicles that, that service that, that use that road to service the businesses, um, I mean, you got a couple hardware stores, you got a, a lumber yard that, that uses that as access, and they all come through that intersection. It's, uh, it, it just, 
Well, the biggest thing, I actually I don't know, like four or five times a day going back and forth, to and from the post office to the bank, home for lunch, whatever, and there's been numerous times where people are, there's no turning line no more. The turning line is gone. And I don't if we want to wait until the end of the month to take them out there and cause an accident, or if we best stop removing them and be done with it. We tried it, we give it a shot, and we can see it's not working, so we will have a failed product later to end up causing somebody to get hurt worse. There was a guy in a wheelchair the other day. He was back on the sidewalk. He didn't go out there anyhow because there was a semi coming to, to turn the corner, and you know they're, they're way back on the sidewalk. They don't. It's not something that's used and you know, probably used by the pedestrians either. They're not getting out there. They're still waiting back at the curb and people are stopping. Well, then it's just that much longer with all the a turning line. I think it's going to be, you know, hate to see it fail, but obviously it's not where it's working the way it's supposed to. It's to just have it removed before something does happen or somebody does get hurt on that intersection. Well, fortunately, the pedestrians have noticed the delineators and that's why they stay on the sidewalk. So the only reason to keep them up would be to honor our commitment that we made to LBLL. Correct. Right. Okay. And they would probably understand if well, obviously they're, they're out there with duct tape taping them up <coughs> a couple, three different times and, you know. We've received numerous, numerous comments all the time. That's kind of a, a representation right in front of our police department to have something like that. I don't think we could. It's not working, too. Uh, the gentleman that spoke to us earlier is not the only one that we're going to get a petition. To go through with this, but anyway, I, I think it's a waste of time just keeping it there, just to honor it. Uh, you have your all your information, uh, you know, what that, that's what it's about. Not, not late, but right now, it's not to drive and study with it. Uh, well, I hope not. I can tell you one thing, it's on TV or out in the radio tomorrow that we're going to remove them when they're done. They'll be all around over tomorrow night by the time we get up the following morning, they'll all be destroyed. But don't do it with your bike, don't you? No, he's not going to try something. Pick them up in pieces. So. I don't disagree. Uh, I mean, even back in March of 16, when we first looked at these, uh, the whole reason that we're looking at narrowing the roads is not really used to be standard of 36, and then we're going to 36, try to make that narrower. Spot um, walls are hard, and the ball around and hard to maintain, so I, I have that same sentiment, um, but uh, as a test, I was okay with, with, with that. It's not a regular company, you yeah. can decide what you want to do. I think it was a lot of it, you know, the balance of what they were asking for. They're willing to help participate in our concerns about how they're going to function and operate. This was a good, good test, and unfortunately, the location for how it is. Physics just didn't operate well for, for how vehicles travel. <coughs> well, there, there's still a big traffic on that corner, it's, you know, and that's why the road is wide as it is, and you have your turning lanes there. And... Okay. Garbage bags? Well, um, so this is a, going to be a poll or a change of direction from what's within here in terms of the memo. Um, as you heard from Mr. Berger, our meeting today did not go well. Uh, we met from 2.30 till about 5 o'clock with one of the haulers leaving the meeting, walking out uh, without agreeing to anything at 4 or around 4 o'clock. Uh, we've reached an impasse in terms of the
customer accounts. Uh, they left their last meeting where it was agreed upon to have the mirrors have the Riverwood Riverview area. The customer account that that entails is about 485. Uh, and where that came from in terms of splitting up the rest and trying to evenly distribute the point to the other two callers, uh, especially the one that left the meeting. Um, in terms of disposal and movers, uh, it's demanding about 70 uh, customer accounts returned to him. Um, we worked in terms of offering um, different amounts, and, and we just couldn't reach a balance. Where it was, so, sorry, discussion of Riverview and Riverwood. We're just talking, that wasn't actually a voted on deal, that was just in our discussion on it. It's where it's direct, direct to try to negotiate with dollars with those, those and that, with that territory first and then splitting evenly the rest. Um, it does, we are, we have about 2,800 customers um, at the probably the lowest amount. We get a little bit of seasonal impact with, with customers or accounts uh, going inactive in the wintertime. Uh, and the other two are left short of, of 1,200. Uh, you know, currently, Ubers has about 1,500 total customers, which in the Riverwood area was annexed. So we, we did bring on quite a few more than that because his service territory is everything north of, of Highway 27. And then currently, Riverwood is his service territory. is everything south of 27. So when that change took place, it, it was transit significant additional uh, customer accounts. So, uh, you know, it was just that happened automatically by the annexation. It wasn't written into the contract. Had a contract annexation. Boom, you get more customers. Here you go, Mary. Because you're north of 27. Yes, because the contract originated 27 to be the dividing point uh, between where your customers were at. Prior to that, it was pretty, pretty well even. My understanding. Uh, well, how many customers do they have? Burgard then? Uh, Burgard's a little over 1,200, Lubert's is a little over 15. Uh, part now, of our negotiation and in, in even talking about the price was to hopefully ensure that the, the increased uh, price in, in service would hopefully some saving to operating costs with the being able to use cards and cider. Um, was to balance out so that they weren't going to be negatively impacted in their operating revenues um, in that fashion for joint expenses. So. John, what were the proposed splits again today? The proposed splits with what was sent out in the contract following that, that meeting um, were River, Riverview, uh, which is the area uh, east of, or west, excuse me, west of Haven Road, north of the way down here, north of the uh, uh, There's a couple other that uh, are just on the river. There's Pine Tree Boulevard in there. We're just numbers is what we're looking for. Uh, 45, about 11, 50, 11, 60, and then 11, 25 is the number. Number of groups on 70 mark. Indicated prior to leaving the meeting, and uh, he had said we were customers. He really was was also upset about using the Riverview area without being um, without that being discussed. But I, in a different conversation with him, I, I tried to ask about whether that was the uh, the time, the total numbers, or specifically that area. He liked that area because you know, how it operates it doesn't have alleys and be working on the street. So where does this leave us now? Quick slap in the face from our haulers that don't want to work together and let our cards go forward like we proposed to the public? So we have, the present haulers have some legal leverage. They have a continuing resolution for the end of this year. Um, but that was that it was under the anticipation that we'd be actively negotiating the terms uh, 
for the next contract at this point you know, with, with the impasse and see that we try to get back into the table and I don't know what else we can offer uh, you know, the customer counts or the customer counts and if they can't uh, accept the, come to an acceptance acceptance on the, on the number that they're going to have Solid waste collection contract. There isn't anything else we can offer. What's the price per pickup and how many people are there is predetermined. Really, there's room for some growth in some areas. There's room for some things we can offer. Make the efforts to start to reorganize. So is that where we need to be or what? To see where the real action is at? I don't know. I yeah, I am this point I'm at So we're up over seventy customers, customers on twenty seven or twenty eight hundred accounts and we're down to seventy customers to throw the whole thing out the window? Well, especially since each one of them is risking if we go into uh, reorganization. Yeah, as well as a reorganization, you have to invite every license hauler and City, which doesn't isn't necessarily just the local haulers that they have to make one for sanitation's license, waste management's license, for public's license, anybody that you see that has a can on there is a is it something that's been reiterated in the current haulers. It was I mean this it was similar, similar, it was it was up. It's similar to just blowing it up and let anybody come in and, and now they're not guaranteed anything here, they're Two haulers are more than double the lowest hauler, and that's not acceptable. So what would you do? Open it up to new bids and then have the lowest bidders or the whole get the whole thing? Or how does that work? That would be if we just um, just eliminated it and went to a completely open collection system. Open collection, let the if we did a haulers supply the can and be done with it. If you do a reorganize, your committee establishes a kind of a recommendation for how you could plan of action and you know that could be like like it was in the first round it was invited the two local haulers and the local haulers I think at that time came with a proposal to the council about how much it was going to be to have that service and how, how the territory was going to be split up um, and it was pretty well right down the middle with the organization changed change over time and then with the demand to try to move to uh, cards with the next 
next contract, I really want to include that as well, as well as the taller user of local residents. Providing cards to over 100 residents, so we kind of disagree that the council was in an equitable position to invite that all our different able to, to negotiate. And they have a lot of business at stake that they're losing to be working to be full and lost customers due to the annexation. That went to a person that appears to be the unhappiest. <laughs> We've been working on this for over a year, haven't we? Yes. Do you have a well, we to give it one more ride? I, I, I mean, I, overnight. this was five hours ago. I've been racking my brain around all of this. Um, I, I've come, I've worked a lot on this, and I, I can't help but feel a little bit of um, fail. Uh, in my efforts, um, if we could go to a, a openly re reorganizing. I'd recommend uh, that. i an open collection. Um, I would, I would, I, the, the, risks, uh, the risk factors for that and, and its damage to our city streets and other cities that have organized collection. I mean, the requirements of the state statute are in research other communities that are doing organized collection. There's a lot of communities that do organized collection for a lot of reasons. Um, I think it's valid, it's still valid here. It's how do we... I'd say if they don't come to an agreement by a by next meeting, I'd say by, you know, set a time before our next meeting, because when we come to the table again with no agreement, we've got no chance. Do we want a Wednesday afternoon? What's that? Do we want a Wednesday afternoon, or don't you guys want to be involved with it at all? I think right now we should let... The emotions are pretty high between Hollers, let them settle down a bit. Come back in a few days, and then let's make it more level headed. Uh, get one last attempt and by the next meeting, come to a decision. I like the Wednesday idea. Since I haven't even been involved in it for a year. Yeah, but then our 20 minute meeting is going to be four and a half hours. Yeah, I, I, I don't have the yeah, That'll be like mind. starting over yeah. and getting us all in there. No, I think they should, they should have one more attempt here and try to resolve this. Have it ready for the next meeting, or else our hands kind of tied. We have to. Well, then we'll go what else. we have to do. Yeah. What else is there to do if we don't come to an agreement? Reorganize? Or what else are you going to do? Face, face, face the consequences mm -hmm. with all of that. It's going to be likely all are going to feel they have a position. Or existing all are going to feel they have a legal position that wouldn't allow us to reorganize without, without them involved. And, their contract is up at the end of the year, right? Their continuing resolution for their contract comes up at the end of last year. So. Okay, well then, we have to, after that, we have no obligation to them, right? The, this was a, you, you, you've made missing history on this. There's there's no clarity in that position. Um, the state statute does not identify that. There's no, there hasn't been any cities that have gone organized and then stopped going organized and had conflict with that. Um, so it's it's not clear. It's, it, it, so we'd be a guinea pig uh, again. Yeah, we'd be thing. a test. We'd be a test case to that. Yeah, first. We like to be first, though. Yeah. Right. Well, something has to be done. I mean, you can't just keep going on and on and on and on. It's been a year. I said that. That's what I said. Started last April. I say agreements got to be on the get on the agenda. Getting on by the next time. Next time, next time so we'll on. I mean, we'll do what we have to do. I don't think we have any other options. I don't think we need to sit here and hash this every meeting, every meeting, every meeting. Right. And I know, John, you must be getting frustrated. I mean, you keep, it's on your agenda. It isn't the only thing you're doing every day. I mean, it's... I think we're all getting frustrated, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, we're I'm frustrated about how many surveys and, you know, right. people are cans are coming, we're ordering cans, what kind of cans you want? No. Yeah. No. Okay. The hell are going to wait another year because yeah. we're having over 70 freaking dumpsters in town. It's frustrating. I agree with you 100%. No, that's why I'm pulling the, you know, I... Put them in the garage for a year or two until we can come to a conclusion. Then you have waste yeah. manager come to town and supply their own cans. So, then we got them. Right. Then you have your green ones. You won't get the red or whatever color. Yeah, then you're going to have green and yellow. No choices. <laughs> what, can I leave it out back? You can leave it wherever you want. Leave it. Go on alleys and streets and yeah. curbs and sidewalks, wherever you want them to go to get them. 
with that. Hate to put it all on you, John. Sorry, John. Uh, up, you're going in. Let's go. We'll see. Okay. Right next to the Um, I, I don't think anybody here is hurt. Um, I think a lot of people here have heard some pretty negative feedback regarding this. Um, if you get into the Sylvia, I'm going to choose your head. It's here with Paul Kent saying that you're going to be adequate and that we can recommend moving forward for getting some applications. I don't know if there's any information at this time. I do have to say I did have one positive, but I've had more negative on this and garbage and everything else that I've been involved in. I would say also. having hearing from Sylvia speak a couple times, is, there's a misconception between hearing Redneck Festival and actually hearing what it is that she's wanting to do with. Although she needs to update so her message. I mean, I, I it's a separate change of the name. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I've had a ton of negative no, 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 no. But a month ago, we um, approved a permit for the West Side Bar to have a ban this weekend. And I just want to read to you what their advertisement said. The weekend starts with Levi Pelzer Band playing on Friday night, May 12th. Are you ready for Skyland Skyline Tattoo's 10th anniversary party on Saturday, May 13th? Dueling DJs, Redneck and North Star Entertainment, will start at 11 a.m. Look for classic cars on Broadway, dart tournament at no noon, Polish horseshoe tournament at 2, frozen t-shirt contest, volleyball pong, and outdoor food served by Herbie's Bar, and it goes on. So why would we say yes to that and no to Redneck Festival? But we approved that event. Right. So, you know, like on their private property or the fenced in area, right? So, is it discrimination? We didn't have it, we didn't have it all the time. We were asking you to partner with other vessels. Sorry for the noise in the background. I'm at City Hall during the daytime on Wednesday the 17th of May. I'm in the little conference room and they're doing some kind of construction work in the rooms next door to me here. 
So that's the saws and all the hammering and everything you've heard in the background. I apologize for that bad audio, but at least you got to hear it. Thanks for listening. From the work session of Little Falls, Minnesota City Council, Monday, the 15th of May, 2017. 
subject category is whether the city wants to license them. And uh, the planning commission decided that they felt like that was a decision best made by the council on um, the licensing in particular. Um, so in my conversation with uh, Morrison County, they do regulate and they do license those kinds of uses. I think they will do that in the city, but if the city wants to have its own standards for licensing, they would need to adopt those. And if the county's ordinance says they will step aside in that case, Because we want to limit them not to be able to have a 
Airbnb. If you got a half a dozen people in town that want to do it, I don't know why we chase people out of town to somewhere else because there ain't nowhere. Because the license Airbnb has a lot of hoops they have to jump through to get licensed, and Airbnb is now doing the same thing without the license without benefiting the city by paying lodging taxes. Um, it's, it's unregulated. They're, they don't have to be inspected by the fire marshal. So if there's a fire, I mean, there's, it's just completely an unregulated area. And I think that the city of Little Falls should have something in place, either saying if you are an Airbnb, then these are the rules you have to follow, or no Airbnbs. There's something to look at and think of because Coming a real popular thing. People in every city in the nation, you know, has Airbnbs and people are pocketing the money without paying any taxes on it. So that's just something maybe that could be discussed. I would suggest maybe checking in with Sartell and what they went through and what their issues were and their concerns. Yeah, and it's Lanesboro. Find out what their city. That, that's a good example of what I was saying that there's uses now for different instances in the five years ago in the 90s. It's easy to You can't accommodate all of them, or can't necessarily come up with one set of rules that's going to accommodate all of them in the future. But that, that's certainly one that, you know, I think, are on the issue of concern for a lot of things. We'll look at that. Other questions? Mostly it was on how really bad it is in terms of the affordable housing for different 
work for Los Angeles California, but um, they just talk about it's you know it's kind of it's mixed bag. It, it, it creates some good things and opportunities for people to you know, earn a little extra revenue on their other properties, but in, in other circumstances it can be really bad, especially when it's not um, if it is serving a larger capacity. a shortage of lodging in Little Falls. We only have 300 hotel beds in this town, and they're full all the time. So as far as competition, I don't think that's an issue. I think what we should do is try to attract some more, you know, legitimate B&Bs or small hotel to increase our lodging. That way, they're doing it by the book. They're, doing, they're regulated. They're licensed. They're inspected. They're safe. Let's just say home occupation. How many home occupations are in Little Falls that we have no idea that are going on? People working on the house, working out of their garage. It's one of those things. It's how much regulations can you put in? How much time do we spend in sending our forces out there to try to find these one or two people? We're going to search the internet and see who's out there doing bed breakfasts five days a week and see if there's a new one that pops up to go out and check on. There's people that do business, to be honest with you, there's people that are going to sit behind the scenes. It's no different than how many people buy stuff off the internet to avoid paying Minnesota sales tax and have a shift in. Well, it's on yourself to end up paying that. And if they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. But there's only so much we can regulate. Well, that's not what the Zoning Commission said when I tried to get um, the hours of serving tea, I, I couldn't say, well, can it be up to the innkeeper? How, what hours they serve tea? And they said, no, this hour to this hour. So, you know, they but is it a B&B that they're operating or is it running out their house? Are they serving food? Is that what they're doing in these Airbnbs? Are they serving food? Do they have restaurants? Are they are cooking food? Are they some of them leave their fridge fully stocked. Some don't. But it's still lodging. Is it a B&B? No. Is it a hotel? Kind of. Is it an apartment that you're renting for a week? Kind of. So it's all the yeah, most of them are on a nightly basis. Yeah, most of them are for one night and people will, you know, rent out their apartment every single weekend and go stay with a friend and split the money with their friend. You know, it's... Sartell did that. They did? Yeah. Well, I think we should check into it at some point. We should just let lay. Um, well, it's not that we should, something we should just slam the door on and say, no, we're not going to allow them either. No, if well, we got a shortage, that much of a shortage. Well, that's why it needs to be discussed. And researched. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Wednesday afternoon between, say, 1 and midnight after 1 for work. Um, Thursday night at 10 to 7, I've got other things with my, my daughter, so that doesn't work for me. But I like 5, that would work. Um, if that works for you guys. Or basically that Friday. Friday, I'll be gone. Wednesday at 1? Is, is there no work on Wednesday at 1? Wednesday is the Friday I've got. It's Wednesday at 1 p.m. 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 One on Wednesday? Do we need any 7 8 folks for that? No. Nope. Sounds like 11 core. Okay, one, two, three, four. Wednesday at 1 don't work for you? It's 17. That's five. Play it. That's six. So we should have enough then. So can I at the end of the meeting, if you wouldn't mind, just to recess until Wednesday the 17th at 1 o'clock. Wednesday 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 at 1 o'
status access, and they all come through that intersection. It's uh, it, it just doesn't fit with the street. Well, the biggest thing I that's all of four or five times a day going back and forth to and from the post office to the bank, home to lunch, whatever. And there's been numerous times where people are there's no turning line no more. The turning line is gone. And I don't. If we want to wait until the end of the month to take them out there and cause an accident, or if we best stop removing them and be done with it, we tried it, we give it a shot, and we can see it's not working. So we will have a failed product later to end up causing somebody to get hurt worse. Here's a guy in a wheelchair the other day. He was back on the sidewalk. He didn't go out there anyhow because there was a semi coming to, to turn the corner, and you know they're they're waiting back on the sidewalk. They don't. It's not something that's used and you know, are probably used by the pedestrians either. They're not getting out there. They're still waiting back at the curb and people are stopping Well, And it's just that much longer with all the a turning line. I think it's going to be, you know, I hate to see it fail, but obviously it's not where it's working the way it's supposed to. It's just having to move before something does happen or somebody does get hurt on that intersection. Well, fortunately, the pedestrians have noticed the delineators, and that's why they stay on the sidewalk. Yeah. So, yeah, that would probably be their shoes. So the only reason to keep them up would be to honor our commitment that we made to LVLL. Correct. Right. Okay. And they would probably understand if they probably understand. That's right. Well, they're out there with duct tape taping them up a couple three different times and you know. We've received numerous numerous comments all day. That's kind of a kind of representation right in front of a police department to have something like that. I don't think we could. It's not working to us. The gentleman that spoke to us earlier, not the only one that we're going to see bank, that we're going to get a petition to go, to go through with this. But anyway, I, I think it's a waste of time just keeping it there, just to honor it. Uh, you have your money here. It's on TV or out in the radio tomorrow that we're going to remove them when they're done. They'll be all ran over tomorrow night by the time we get up the following morning. They'll all be destroyed. But don't do it with your bike, don't you? No, he's going to Picking them up in pieces. So. I don't disagree. Uh, I mean, even back in March of 16, when we first looked at these, uh, the whole reason that we were looking at narrowing the roads is not really
we're only four o'clock. Um, we've read reached an impasse in terms of the customer accounts. Um, the last meeting where it was agreed upon to have the mirrors have the Riverwood Riverview area and the customer comes with that entails about 485. Uh, and where that came from in terms of splitting up the rest and trying to evenly distribute the point to the other two haulers, uh, especially the one that left the meeting uh, from our company disposal and movers. Uh, Demanding about 70 um, a customer accounts returned to him. Um, we worked in terms of offering um, different amounts and, and we just couldn't reach a balance. Where it was, so. so, our discussion of Riverview and Riverwood, we're just talking, that wasn't actually a bird on deal, that was just in our discussion on. It was where it's direct, directed to try to negotiate with dollars with those, with those and that, with that territory first and then splitting evenly the rest. Um, it does, we are, we have about 2,800 customers um, at the, probably the lowest amount. We get a little bit of seasonal impact with, with the customers, or accounts um, going inactive in the wintertime. Uh, and the other two are left short of about 1,200. Uh, you know, currently, Uber's has about 1,500 total customers, which when the Riverwood area was annexed, we, we did bring on quite a few more from that because his service territory is everything north of, of Highway 27, and then currently Riverwood is in service territory, is everything south of 27. So when that change took place, it, it was significant additional um, customer accounts. So. Uh, you know, Did just that happened automatically by the annexation. It wasn't written into the contract. Had a contract annexation. Boom, you get more customers. Here you go, Mary. Because you're north of 27. Yes, because the contract already needed 27 to be the defining point uh, between where your customers were at. Prior to that, it was pretty, pretty well even. Um, uh, my understanding is. Uh, well, how many customers do they have? We're guard then. Uh, Burgard's a little over 1,200, Burgard's is a little over 15. Uh, part wow. of our negotiation in, in even talking about the price was to hope, hopefully ensure that the, the increased uh, price in, in service would hopefully some saving to operate the cost with the being able to use cards and cider and tippers. And there's, it does get slightly more, or it is getting more expensive. Uh, to balance out so that they weren't going to be negatively impacted in their operating revenues um, in that fashion for being joint expenses. So. John, what were the proposed splits again today? The proposed splits with what was sent out in the contract following that, that meeting um, were River, Riverview, uh, which is the area uh, east of, or west, excuse me, west of Haven Road, north of the way down here, north of the uh, uh, There's a couple other that are just on the river. There's Pine Tree Boulevard in there. We're just numbers is what we're looking for. Uh, 45, about 11, 50, 11, 60, and then 11, 25 is the group. The group's on 71. You would be indicated prior to Customers. He really was was also upset about using the Riverview area without being um, without that being discussed. But I, in a different conversation with him, I tried to ask about whether that was the uh, the time, the total numbers, or specifically that area. He would like that area because you know, how it operates it doesn't have alleys and could be working on the street. But really, bottom line. So where does this leave us now? Quick slap in the face from our haulers that don't want to work together and let our cards go forward like we proposed to the public? So we have, the present haulers have some legal leverage. They have a continuing resolution for the end of the end of this year. Um, but that was that, it was under the anticipation that we'd be actively 
negotiating the terms uh, for the next contract at this point you know, with, with the impasse and see that we try to get back into the table and I don't know what else we can offer uh, you know, the customer counts or the customer counts and if they can't uh, accept the, come to an acceptance acceptance on the, on the number that they can have Solid waste collection contract. There isn't anything else we can offer. What's the price per pickup and how many people are there is predetermined. Really, there's room for some growth in some areas. There's room for some things we can come. We can make the efforts to start to reorganize. So is that where we need to be or what? To see where the real action is at? I don't know. I, yeah, I am. At this point, I'm at So we're fighting over 70 customers on 27 or 2,800 accounts, and we're down to 70 customers to throw the whole thing out the window? Well, especially since each one of them is risking if we go into a reorganization. It's getting yeah, less. With reorganization, you have to invite every license holder to city, which doesn't, isn't necessarily just the local haulers. It could be Glock for sanitation's license, waste management's license, for the public's license, anybody that you see that has a can on there is a is like something that's been reiterated in the current haulers. It was, I mean, this it was similar, similar, it was it was up. It's similar to just blowing it up and let anybody come in and, and now they're not guaranteed anything here. They're haulers are more than double the lowest hauler and that's not acceptable. So what would you do? Open it up to new bids and then have the lowest bidders or the whole get the whole thing or how does that work? That would be if we just uh, just eliminated it and went to a completely open collection system. Open collection let the if we did a haulers apply the can and be done with it. If you do reorganize your establishes a kind of a recommendation for how you could plan of action and you know that could be like like it was in the first round it was invited the two local haulers and the local haulers I think at that time came with a proposal to the council about how much it was going to be to have that service and how, how the territory was going to be split up um, and it was you know, pretty well right down the middle with the organization changed over time and then the demand to try to, to uh, 
cartons with the next contract. I really want to improve that as well, as well as the taller user of the local residents. Providing cartons to over 100 residents, so we can kind of, you know, disagree that the council was in an inevitable position to invite like that all or was able to, to negotiate. Because they had a lot of business at stake that they were losing, and they worked in this case. Well, and lost customers due to the annexation. That went to a person that appears to be the unhappiest. <laughs> We've been working on this for over a year, haven't we? Yes. Do you have a well, motion to give it one more run? I, I mean, I, overnight. this was five hours ago. I've been racking my brain around all of this. Um, I, I've come, I've worked a lot on this, and I, I can't help but feel a little bit of um, fail. Uh, in my efforts, um, if we do go to a, a openly re reorganizing, I'd recommend I would not advise an open collection. Um, I would, I, I, the, the risks, uh, the risk factors for that, and, and its damage to our city streets, and their cities that have organized collection. I mean, the requirements of the state statute are in research other communities that are doing organized collection. There's a lot of communities that do organized collection for a lot of reasons. Um, I think it's valid, it's still valid here. It's how do we... I'd say if they don't come to an agreement by a by next meeting, I'd say by, a, you know, set a time before our next meeting, because when we come to the table again, with no agreement, we've got no chance. Do we want a Wednesday afternoon? What's that? Do we want a Wednesday afternoon, or don't you guys want to be involved with it at all? I think right now we should let... The emotions are pretty high between let them settle down a bit and come back in a few days and then let's make it more level headed. Uh, give one last attempt and by the next meeting and come to a decision. I like the Wednesday idea. Just, I haven't even been involved in it for a year. Yeah, but then our 20 minute meeting is going to be four and a half hours. Yeah, I, I, I don't have the yeah, That'll be like I starting mean, over yeah. and getting us all in there. No, I think they should, they should have one more attempt here and try to resolve this. Have it ready for the next meeting, or else our hands kind of tied. We have to. Well, then we'll go. What do we have to do? Yeah. What else is there to do if we don't come to an agreement? Reorganize, or what else are you going to do? And face the, and face the consequences mm -hmm. with all of that. It's going to be likely all are going to feel they have a position. Very existing all are going to feel they have a legal position that wouldn't allow us to reorganize without without them involved. And, their contract is up at the end of the year, right? Their continuing resolution for their contract comes up at the end of last year. Okay, well then, we have to, after that, we have no obligation to them, right? The, this was a, you, you, you made you missed the history on this. There's there's no clarity in that position. Um, the state statute does not identify that. There's no, there hasn't been any cities that have gone organized and then stopped going organized and had conflict with that. Um, so it's it's not clear. It's, it, so we'd be a guinea pig again. Uh, yeah, we'd be a test. We'd be a test case to that yeah, first. We like to be first, though. Yeah. Right. Sure. Well, something has to be done. I mean, you can't just keep going on and on and on and on. It's been a year. I said that. That's what I said. It started in last April. I say agreements got to be on the get on the agenda. It ain't on the next, next council meeting. Next time we'll be on. I mean, we'll do what we have to do. I don't think we have any other options. I don't think we need to sit here and hash this every meeting, every meeting, every meeting. Right. And I know, John, you must be getting frustrated. I mean, you keep, it's on your agenda. It isn't the only thing you're doing every day. I mean, it's... I think we're all getting frustrated, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, we're I'm so frustrated. We've got how many surveys and, you know, right. people with cans are coming, we're ordering cans, what kind of cans you want? No. Yeah. No. Okay. Now we're going to wait another year because yeah. we're having over 70 freaking dumpsters in town. It's frustrating. I agree with you 100%. No, that's why I'm pulling the, you know, I... Put them in the garage for a year or two until we can come to a conclusion. Then you have worse men who come to town to supply their own cans, so then we got them. Then you have your green ones. Well, get the red ones. Whatever. Color. Yeah, then you're going to have green and yellow. No choices. <laughs> what, can I leave it out back? You can leave it wherever you want to leave it. Go on alleys and streets and curbs and sidewalks, wherever you want them to go to get them. 
with that. Hate to put it all on you, John. Sorry, it's not bad. Bob up, you're going in. That's cool. We'll see. Okay. Right next festival. Um, I I don't think anybody here is hurt. Um, I think a lot of people here have heard some negative feedback regarding this. Um, if, you, if you get into the Sylvia, I'm sure you're here with the public and say, recommend moving forward for getting some applications. I don't know if there's any information at this time. I do have to say I did have one positive, but I've got more negative on this and garbage and everything else that I've been involved in. I would say also. having here Sylvia speak a couple times, is there's a misconception between hearing Red Day Festival and actually hearing what it is that she's planning to do with. Although she needs to update okay. her message. I mean, yeah. I, it's a separate change of the name. Yeah, I, agree. <laughs> I, just, I agree. I've had a ton of negative. No, 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 no. But a month ago, we um, approved a permit for the West Side Bar to have. Uh, back this weekend, and I just want to read to you what their advertisement said. The weekend starts with Levi Pelzer Band playing on Friday night, May 12th. Are you ready for Skyline, Skyline Tattoo's 10th anniversary party on Saturday, May 13th? Dueling DJs, Redneck and North Star Entertainment, will start at 11 a.m. Look for classic cars on Broadway, dart tournament at no, noon, Polish horseshoe tournament at 2, frozen t-shirt contest, volleyball pong and outdoor food served by Herbie's Bar, and it goes on. So why would we say yes to that and no to Redneck Festival? But we approved that, that, that event. Right, so, you know, like on their private property or Sorry for the noise in the background. I'm at City Hall during the daytime on Wednesday the 17th of May. I'm in the little conference room and they're doing some kind of construction work in the rooms next door to me here. 
So that's the saws and all the hammering and everything you've heard in the background. I apologize for that bad audio, but at least you got to hear it. Thanks for listening. The following recording is from the work session of Little Falls, Minnesota City Council, Monday, the 15th of May, 2017. 
happy with what he originally asked for, then we're willing to give him that. But he won't agree because he knows he can get more. I'm like the third blue on this.
regards to it. One is where the businesses are not allowed to locate in the city, which is very standard. You have to work with the second category is whether the city wants to license them. And the planning commission decided that they felt like that was a decision best made by the council on the licensing in particular. So in my conversation with Morrison County, they do regulate and they do license those kinds of uses. And they will do that in the city, but if the city wants to have its own standards for licensing, they would need to adopt those. And in the county's ordinance, they will step aside in that case and let the city not enforce theirs. So that's my position on this one. But I think at this point, the staff's review of it seems to make some sense to have some licensing. So that's kind of a quick overview of everything. There's one change that I would propose. There was a number, I think three places in the ordinance where we were proposing elimination of sexual abuse, but felt like they were already covered in other parts of the city code. In two of those areas, that's true when we looked at it. In the third area, when we looked at it closer, it probably is covered by other sections, but it gets a little bit gray rather than creating a gray area. We felt like we should just leave that in. So that has to do with page 76. The times of day regarding loading and unloading of construction materials. Using the limits that come between 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. in the afternoon. So rather than creating more confusion, we felt like for now we'll just leave that in. And for those other sections of the city code that are updated on those, we can consolidate them at that point. So that's one change from what was recommended by the planning commission. And I think to the staff, I would recommend that we keep it and leave it for the planning commission. So I will leave it there. And I will, I guess, add or answer some questions. I was just going to add that the planning commission has been working on this probably 10 plus years. I haven't been working on it that long, but I know the planning commission has. And the code hasn't been updated, I think, since 1974. So it's been sort of for an overhaul. It was good just to go through all of it at once, try to get a holistic approach to it, to get all of it taken care of. So it's been a long time coming. This is my year. I know it's a quite lengthy document to read, but I would encourage you guys to take a look at it because it does affect everything that we have and are allowed to have in the code. Do you have any questions for Ben? Concerns? Thoughts? I do plan to have this on the work session again at the next meeting before we bring it to the council for introduction. That way we can have a good discussion in terms of what we want to have in that before we introduce it. Because it's always easier to have it right when you introduce it so that we can vote on it and it goes through as opposed to sending it back, rewriting it, and then coming again. So I do plan to bring it up one more time. I have a suggestion, maybe. The city of Lanesboro, in their city code, they prohibit Airbnbs. And I wonder if that's something we would think about. And it's not because I have a B&B and I don't want the competition. It's because Airbnbs typically don't collect lodging taxes that directly benefit the CDB. So I don't know if that's something that the planning commission wants to think about or address or look into. But I see some taxes holding it down because they had somebody there that was actually offering it. An Airbnb? Yeah. And especially if we've got a bike trail coming through and we're trying to bring more B&Bs into town, you know, in order to, for the city to benefit from them as well as the individual who has the B&B. And their Airbnbs are really unregulated. So it might be something to think about and look into. Well, it's also competition for hotels in the community. Yeah. And it's also, it's not like it was more for, like, the big city tourist traps where they had all kinds of amenities for them. So that's why it's our town voting it down. That's what they're doing. They voted against the Airbnb? I believe so, yes. Is it that bad a thing, though, if we've got hotels in town that are filled up that don't have room for people to chase them off to the next house? Well, then we can get some more hotels that the city can benefit from rather than, you know, because... Find an investor for a minute. Find an investor. Sure. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
True, but we have... We don't want to chase people out of town either because we want to limit them not to be able to have a Airbnb. If you got a half a dozen people in town that want to do it, I don't know why we chase people out of town to somewhere else because there ain't nowhere... Because the licensed B&B has a lot of hoops they have to jump through to get licensed. And Airbnb is now doing the same thing without the license without benefiting the city by paying lodging taxes. Um, it's, it's unregulated. They're, they don't have to be inspected by the fire marshal. So if there's a fire, I mean, there's, it's just completely an unregulated area. And I think that the city of Little Falls should have something in place, either saying if you are an Airbnb, then these are the rules you have to follow, or no Airbnbs. There's something to look at and think of because Coming a real popular thing. People in every city in the nation, you know, has Airbnbs and people are pocketing the money without paying any taxes on it. So that's just something maybe that could be discussed. I would suggest maybe checking in with Sartell and what they went through and what their issues were and their concerns. Yeah, yeah, it's Lanesboro. Find out what theirs. That, that's a good example of what I was saying that there's uses now and we're never anticipated between the five years ago in that case. It seems like um, we can't accommodate all or can't necessarily come up with one set of rules that's going to accommodate all of the future. But that, that's certainly one that Yeah, I was actually just listening to, to a podcast on, on this. 
time we looked at. Mostly it was uh, how really bad it is in terms of the affordable housing for the support for Los Angeles, California. But um, they did talk about it's, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag. It, it, it creates some good things and opportunities for people to you know, earn a little extra revenue on their other properties, but in, in other circumstances, it can be really bad, especially when it's not, um, if it is serving a larger capacity. have a shortage of lodging in Little Falls. We only have 300 hotel beds in this town and they're full all the time. So as far as competition, I don't think that's an issue. I think what we should do is try to attract some more, you know, legitimate B&Bs or small hotel to increase our lodging. That way they're doing it by the book. They're, doing, they're regulated. They're licensed. They're inspected. They're safe. Let's just like home occupation. How many home occupations are in Little Falls that we have no idea that are going on? People up working on a house, working out their garage. It's one of those things. It's how much regulations can you put in? How much time do we spend in sending our forces out there to try to find these one or two people? We're going to search the internet and see who's out there doing bed breakfasts five days a week and see if there's a new one that pops up to go out and check out. There's people that do business the honest way and there's people that are going to stick behind the scenes. It's no different than how many people buy stuff off the internet to avoid paying Minnesota sales tax and have it shipped in. Well, it's on yourself to end up paying that. And if they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. But there's only so much we can regulate. Well, that's not what the Zoning Commission said when I tried to get um, the hours of serving tea, I, I couldn't say, well, can it be up to the innkeeper? How, what hours they serve tea? And they said, no, this hour to this hour. So, you know, they is, it a, is it a B&B that they're operating or is it running out their house? Are they serving food? Is that what they're doing in these Airbnbs? Are they serving food? Do they have some restaurants? Are they cooking food? Or are they... Some of them leave their fridge fully stocked. Some don't. But it's still logic. Is it a B and B? No. Is it a hotel? Kinda. Is it an apartment that you're renting for a week? Kinda. So it's all. Yeah, most of them are on a nightly basis. Yeah, most of them are for one night, and people will, you know, rent out their apartment every single weekend and go stay with a friend and split the money with their friend. You know, it's. Sartell did that. They did. Yeah. Well, I think we should check into it at some point. That's not the way we, something we should slam the door on and say, no, we're not going to allow them either. No, if we got a shortage, that much of a shortage of... Well, that's why it needs to be discussed. <laughs> and researched. Sort of like a noon meeting or something? Yeah, 
the semi traffic and large vehicles that, that service that, that you have really to service the businesses. Um, I think you got a couple hardware stores, you got a, a lumber yard that, that uses that as access, and they all come through that intersection. It's, uh, it, it just doesn't fit the width of the street. Well, the biggest thing, I touch on four or five times a day going back and forth to and from the post office to the bank, home to lunch, or whatever. And there's been numerous times where People are, there's no turning line no more. The turning line is gone. And I don't, if we want to wait until the end of the month to take them out there and cause an accident, or if we best stop removing them and be done with it, we tried it, we give it a shot, and we can see it's not working, so we will have a failed product later to end up causing somebody to get hurt worse. Here's a guy in a wheelchair the other day. He was back on the sidewalk. He didn't go out there anyhow because there was a semi coming to, to turn the corner. And, you know, they're, they're way back on the sidewalk, they don't, it's not something that's used and, you know, probably used by the pedestrians either, they're not getting out there, they're still waiting back at the curb and people are stopping, well, then it's just that much longer with all the a turning line, I think it's going to be, you know, I hate to see it fail, but obviously it's not where it's working the way it's supposed to, it's just having to move before something does happen or somebody does get hurt on that intersection. Well, fortunately, the pedestrians have noticed the delineators and that's why they stay on the sidewalk. Yeah. So if they that would probably be their shoes. Well, and with them being busted, it creates a traffic hazard too. Right. So I would rec my recommendation would be obviously if you tried it, it has the right idea, it just doesn't fit the allocation, I would recommend it. So the only reason to keep them up would be to honor our commitment that we made to LBLL. Correct. Right. Okay. And they would probably understand if they probably it's understand. Like, that's right. Obviously, they're out there with duct tape taping them up a couple, two, three different times, and you know. We've received numerous, numerous comments calling this perfect. That's kind of a poor representation right in front of our police department to have something like that. I don't think we could. It's not working, too. The gentleman that spoke to us earlier, not the only one that we received, we're going to get a petition. It's on TV or out in the radio tomorrow that we're going to remove them when they're done. They'll be all ran over tomorrow night by the time we get up the following morning. They'll all be destroyed. Don't do it with your bike, though. You're going to be them up in pieces. So. Well, the Go well. 
Uh, we met from 2.30 till about 5 o'clock with one of the haulers leaving the meeting, walking out uh, without agreeing to anything at 4, around 4 o'clock. Uh, we've read, reached an impasse in terms of the customer accounts. Uh, they left their last meeting where it was agreed upon to have the mirrors have the Riverwood Riverview area and the customer account that that entails is about 485. Uh, and where that came from in terms of splitting up the rest and trying to evenly distribute it between the other two callers, uh, especially the one that left the meeting uh, from our kind of disposal and movers. Uh, it's demanding about 70 uh, the customer accounts returned to him. Um, we worked in terms of offering um, different amounts and, and we just couldn't reach a balance. So, Sorry, discussion of Riverview and Riverwood. We're just talking. That wasn't actually a voted on deal. That was just in our discussion on. It was where it's direct, direct to try to negotiate with the haulers with those, with those, and then with that territory first, and then splitting evenly the rest. Um, it does. We are. We have about 2,800 customers um, at the probably the lowest amount. We get a little bit of seasonal impact with. Customers or accounts uh, going inactive in the wintertime. Uh, and the other two are left short of, of 1,200. Uh, you know, currently, Hoover's has about 1,500 total customers, which when the Riverwood area was annexed, we, we did bring on quite a few more than that because his service territory is everything north of, of Highway 27. And then currently, Hoover is in service territory. So when that change took place, it was significant additional uh, customer accounts. So, uh, you know, it was just that happened automatically by the annexation. It wasn't written into the contract. Had a contract annexation. Boom, you get more customers. Here you go, Mary. Because you're north of 27. Yes, because the contract delineated 27 to be the defining point. Uh, Customers Prior to that, it was pretty, pretty well even. Um, you might understand the uh, well, How many customers did they have? Burgard and Lubert. Uh, Burgard's a little over 1,200. Lubert's is a little over 15. Uh, part wow. of our negotiation and in, in even talking about the price was to hope, hopefully ensure that the, the increased uh, price in, in service would Hopefully, it's not going to be to operate the cost with the being able to use cards and cider and tippers. And there's, it does slightly more, or it is getting more expensive. Um, it was to balance out so that they weren't going to be negatively impacted in their operating revenues um, going in that fashion for being joint expenses. So. John, what were the proposed splits again today? Proposed splits with what was sent out in the contract following that, that meeting uh, were River, Riverview, uh, which is the area uh, east of, or west, excuse me, west of Payment Road, north of the right up here, north of the uh, uh, There's a couple other that uh, are just on Riverview. There's some Tree Boulevard in there. We're just numbers is what we're looking for. Uh, 45, about 11, 50, about 60, and then 11. He would be indicated prior to leaving the meeting that he had said we were customers. He really was was also upset about using the Riverview area without being um, without that being discussed. But I, in a different conversation with him, I tried to ask about whether that was the uh, the time, the total numbers, or specifically that area. He would like that area because you know, how it operates. So where does this leave us now? A quick slap in the face from our haulers that don't want to work together and let our cards go forward like we proposed to the public? So we have, the present haulers have some 
good goal leverage. They have a continuing resolution for the end of this year. Um, but that was that it was under the anticipation that we'd be actively negotiating the terms uh, for the next contract at this point you know, with, with the impasse and see that we try to get back into the table and I don't know what else we can offer. Uh, you know, the customer counts are the customer counts and if they can't uh, accept the come to an acceptance or acceptance on the, on the number that they can have. Solid waste collection contract. There is anything else we can offer. What's um, the price per pickup and how many people are there is predetermined. Really, there's, there's room for some growth in some areas. There's room for some We can make the efforts to start to reorganize. walks out doesn't want to negotiate? Do I have to negotiate with the whole council? Is that where we need to be or what? To see where the real action is at? I don't know. I, yeah, I am. At this point, I'm at So Rick, as we're fighting over 70 customers on 27 or 2,800 accounts and we're down to 70 customers to throw the whole thing out the window? Well, especially since each one of them is risky and if we want to uh, Reorganization. Yeah, it's with reorganization, you have to invite every license hauler in, in the city, which doesn't isn't necessarily just the local haulers. I think a lot of sanitation is licensed, waste management is licensed, the public's licensed. Anybody that you see that has a can on there is very yeah, well. Is something that's been reiterated in the current haulers? It was. I mean, this it is was similar, similar, it up. It's similar to just blowing it up and letting anybody come in and, and now they're not guaranteed anything here they're two haulers are more than double the lowest hauler and that's not acceptable so what would you do open it up to do this and then have the lowest bidder for the whole get the whole thing or how does that work that would be if we just um, just eliminated it and went to a completely open collection system open collection let the if we did a reorganize, can, you can be done if with you it. do a reorganize, your committee establishes a kind of a recommendation for how you, your plan of action, and, you know, that could be like like it was in the first round. It was invited the two local haulers, and local haulers, I think, at that time came with a proposal to the council about how much it was going to be to have that service, and 
how, how the territory was going to be split up. Um, and it was you know, pretty well right down the middle with the taxation changes and things change over time. And then the demand to try to move to uh, cards with the next contract. I really want to move that as well, as well as to taller and serve the local residents. Providing cards to over 100 residents. So they kind of you know, disagree that the council was in an inevitable position to invite that all or to be able to, to negotiate. A lot of business at stake that they were losing to be working this way. What went lost the customers to pay on exaction? That went to what? A person that appears to be the unhappiest. We've been working on this for over a year, haven't we? Yes. Do you have a right to give it one more ride? I don't mean, think overnight. This was five hours ago. I've been racking my brain around it. All of this. Um, I, I've come, I've worked a lot on this, and I, I can't help but feel a little bit of um, fail uh, in my efforts. Um, if we can go to just openly re reorganizing, I would not advise an open collection. Um, I would, but I, I, the, the risks, uh, the risk factors for that, and, and it's damage to our city streets. And there's cities that have open requirements in the state statute and research other communities that are doing organized collection. There's a lot of communities that do organized collection for a lot of reasons. Um, I think it's valid, it's still valid here. It's how do we I'd say if they don't come to an agreement by our next meeting, I'd say by, you know, seven o'clock before our next meeting, because when we come to the table again with no agreement, we've got no chance. Do on a Wednesday afternoon? What's that? Do it on a Wednesday afternoon, or don't you guys want to be involved with it at all? I think right now we should let the emotions are pretty high between the three haulers. Let them settle down a bit. Come back in two days, and then let's make it more level headed. Uh, get one last attempt, and by the next meeting, come to a decision. I like the Wednesday idea. This is, I haven't even been involved in it for a year. Yeah, but then our 20 minute meeting is going to be four and a half hours. Yeah. I, I, I don't have the That'll be like starting over yeah. and getting us all in there. No, I think they should, they should have one more attempt here to try to resolve this and have it ready for the next meeting or else our hands kind of tied and we have to well, then we'll go what else. do we have to do. Yeah. What else is there to do if we don't come to an agreement? Reorganize it? Or what else are you going to do? And face, the, and face the consequences mm -hmm. with all of that. It's likely all are going to feel they have a position very existing all are going to feel they have a legal position that wouldn't allow us to reorganize without without them involved and, and their contract's up the end of the year right their continuing resolution for their contract comes up at the end of last year so. okay well then we have to after that we have no obligation to them right that this was a you, you you've made misfit history on this there's there's no clarity in that position um, the state statute does not identify that. There's no, there hasn't been any cities that have gone organized and then stopped going organized and had conflict with that. Um, so it's it's not clear. In, 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 so we'd be a guinea pig again. Uh, yeah, we'd be, a test, we'd be a test case to that law. Yeah, first. We like to be first, though. So. Yeah, right. Well, something has to be done. I mean, you can't just keep going on and on and on and on. It's been a year. I said that. That's what I said. It started last April. I say agreement's got to be on the get on the agenda. We need on the next, next council meeting. Next council meeting. We'll, 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 I mean, we'll do what we have to do. I don't think we have any other options. I don't think we need to sit here and hash this every meeting, every meeting, every meeting. Right. And I know, John, you must be getting frustrated. I mean, you keep it's on your agenda. It isn't the only thing you're doing every day. I mean, it's. I think we're all getting frustrated, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, we're coming up with we've got how many surveys, and you know, right. people with cans are coming, we're ordering cans, what kind of cans you want? No. No. The hell with you, now we're going to wait another year because yeah. we're arguing over 70 freaking dumpsters in town. It's frustrating. I agree with you 100%. No, that's why I'm pulling the, you know, I. Or we're going to put them in the garage for a year or two until we can come to a conclusion, then you have waste management come to town and supply their own cans, so then we got them. And you'll get green ones. You'll get the blue ones. 
red and whatever color. Yeah, and you're going to have green and yellow. No choices. What, can I leave it out back? You can leave it wherever you want with it. <laughs> go on alleys and streets and curbs and sidewalks wherever you want them to go to get them. Right through your yard. Hmm. What's that? Sure, you don't want to need to put it all on you, John. Sorry, John. Yeah. Well, I'm up. You're going in. Let's go. Let's see. Okay. Right next festival. Um, I... I don't think anybody here is hurt. Um, I think a lot of people here have heard some negative feedback regarding this. Um, if, you, if you get into it, it's still beyond the user, but it's here with the public and saying uh, you're kind of going to be back with it. I recommend moving forward for getting some applications. I don't know if there's any information at this time. I do have say I did have one positive, but I've had more negative on this and garbage and everything else that I've been involved in. I would say also. having hearing facilities so speak a couple times. Is, there's a misconception between hearing Redneck Festival and actually hearing what it is that she's planning to do. Oh, she needs to update so her message. Yeah. Okay. It's a separate change of the name. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just, uh, that's a number. Yeah, I'm
Sorry for the noise in the background. I'm at City Hall during the daytime on Wednesday the 17th of May. I'm in the little conference room and they're doing some kind of construction work in the rooms next door to me here. So that's the saws and all the hammering and everything you've heard in the background. I apologize for that bad audio, but at least you got to hear it. Thanks for listening.